Welcome back to Rated Radio with your hosts, Rayburn Alexander and Shane Windham. Rayburn, what Billboard hit did we cover this week? Smoking Out the Window by Silk Sonic Sonic. Who is that? That's Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock. Okay. Is it Pock? Is it Pack? I have no idea. I was going to say, nobody knows. <laughs> what do you think about the song? Pure, funktastic romance. The combination of Anderson and Mars and Mr. Bootsy Collins himself is exactly the greatness you expect. Five stars. Yeah, this song is one I'm definitely here for. I already love these two artists individually, so hearing them together is like a music dream come true. The instrumental sounds like it contains at least one old school R&B sample, but I couldn't place it. The vocal delivery is bliss. I can't relate to the actual subject matter of the track, but I still had trouble turning it off, even after multiple listens. Five very bright stars for me. And if you have the chance, listen to that album. You will not be disappointed. And if you are, sorry about your life. And ladies and gentlemen, there's the first sorry about your life of season seven. Let's go ahead and talk about what the people are here for. We're going to start with Kay's Choice right after this musical intro. So the first album we covered by Kay's Choice is Paradise and Me from 1996. This was my bottom album. This is my middle album. Out of the 14 tracks, I gave nine fives. I gave four fives. My top track was Wait. My top track was White Kite Fauna. And my bottom track was To This Day. And my bottom track was Iron Flower. See, that was almost my top track. I can say uh, White Kite Fauna. I'm surprised other people like it. I like it a lot. But okay. it it seems like something that would be kind of hard to get into. It's, it's a strange lyrical thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. This album showcases a lot of the group's stylistic range and quirky, poetic lyricism. There's also a comedic bent to certain tracks. It's a nice throwback to the mid-90s alternative scene. The brother-sister duo provide a pretty unique vocal harmony. If you're looking for their most rock-forward effort, this album's for you. For me, this is alternative rock with intoxicating female vocals and piano. This is post-grunge, slow, emotional songs. At times, it can be sad, yet funny, so. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Love the engagement, Shane. Let's move on to our next album. It's interesting. Okay. It can be sad and funny. Oh, you know, I mean, come on. That's your favorite kind of comedy, Yes. Yes, yes. Self-deprecating humor is most definitely my bag. Cathartic. Uh, Cocoon Crash was the next album we covered. That's from 1998. This was my top album. This was also my top album. Out of the 14 tracks, I gave 12 fives. I gave five fives. My top track was Winners. My top track was In Your Room. And my bottom track was Now Is Mine. Freestyle. I remember not liking this album the first time I heard it, but that was an unexplainably poor take, uh, proof that good music sometimes has to grow on us. Fact is, this disc is exquisite, lighter, more cohesive, and packs a deeper emotional punch than its predecessor. Easy to see why it's gone platinum in spite of not having any massive hits and it only being nerds like me who've gone around singing its praises for decades. I really like this disc. And I do too. This is super relaxing, slow and light, emotional, still adds a little bit more rock this go around. And yeah, I agree with Shane. It made my top for a reason. Our final album is Almost Happy from the year 2000. 2000. 2000. Interesting year. The mille- what? The millennium? Mm-hmm. The millennium. Or the willennium if you were there. The willennium? So stupid. Are you, is that a Will Smith <laughs> reference? Get so the stupid. fuck out of here with that. Hey, it was real. This was my middle pick. This is my bottom album. Out of the 14 tracks, I gave 11 fives. I gave three fives. My top track was Always Everywhere, but I should say that was not an easy pick for me. Okay. My top track was Almost Happy, which is the title track of the album. My bottom track was Home. I could have said the introduction, but that track makes me smile. Same. Mine was Home as well. This one feels like a continuation of Cocoon Crash, and while it's not quite as good, that's a very high bar. 
the effort's a lot of softer alternative type love songs. Apart from a few missteps, it's extremely solid. Even the hidden track manages to be touching. Some of these songs are always going to stick with you, so it's really a shame that this album never gained traction in the States. This felt like a B-side to Cocoon Crash. Space alternative emo rock, folk rock at times, but a lot of the same stuff. Should mention that one of the things we didn't cover here, one of their hits, was from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer soundtrack. I would recommend skipping any Greatest Hits album that you find and taking the deep dive. This is not a Greatest Hits artist, in my opinion. Uh, As far as album art goes, I wish they'd go back to using almost Happy's original cover art. They all have that, that the art, the albums that I pick, they have a specific artist Mm -hmm. and it looked very uniform when I owned the discs. Mm hmm. But now they do this, it's just them sitting, the brother and sister sitting on a bench for yeah. Almost Happy and I don't like it as much. Okay. Do you have any notes or anything? Yeah, a couple of things that I want to say for, if listeners don't know, this is a band of si- siblings plus others from Belgium. So this is a Belgium-based band. They toured with the P- Proclaimers. And if you don't know the Proclaimers, they sing 500 Miles and the Indigo Girls. Don't get me started, man. They have been making music for over 29 years and the lead singer came out as a trans man in 2019. It does not surprise me. No, no, me neither. I always felt like he was writing music for his sister to sing. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense for me. The the harmonization is a strange one, Mm -hmm. but I I definitely get the vibe. So I I like it. Uh, The music makes me feel like someone else knows exactly how I feel at all times, by which I mean there's a lot of dynamic emotional stuff going on in this group's music and lyrics. Yeah. Uh, Case Choice is one of those groups which my sisters and I agreed on growing up. That always stuck with me as evidence of their broad appeal, probably to do with their being Belgian based, but I was surprised that they never became bigger here in the US. People who only know them for the song Not an Addict are missing out on a lot. You ready to go on our break? Yes. And we're back. Shane. Yeah, Shane's before, list. Before you before you start down whatever you're about to say, what? the uh the list topic I chose okay. was songs for your secret crush. More sappy love shit. Here we go. Uh the song that I chose for my list was Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield. True story. I cried on my bed multiple nights in the seventh grade to this track. I felt the realness of longing for another that could not be had. I even went the extra mile and changed the names in the track to my own version. To who? That's another story for another time. (laughs) Shut up, Shane. (laughs) The struggle was apparently very real. I don't even know how to touch it. (laughs) It's just like, man, I feel like I've done some pathetic things in my time. It was pretty bad. That that's a mm-hmm. that's another level. Mm-hmm. My pick was a song called "Talk to Me" by Carrie Noble. Pretty sure I've mentioned previously that I went out with our friend Codes, one of the co-hosts of Semi Friendly Podcast. Yes, I'm I'm aware. Yeah, went out with his cousin a few times when I was younger. I had a huge crush on this girl for quite a long time. Ahead of that happening, though, I also didn't initially know that it was my friend's cousin. To me, she was just a Hastings employee who used to casually make fun of my listening choices and special orders. I used to think of her every time this song played before finally asking her out. She said yes, but I was still getting over a breakup and couldn't get out of my head enough to let her see how compatible we actually were. I don't look back on this as a mistake, though. Not long after things between us went absolutely nowhere, uh, she met the love of her life. They lived happily until he wound up getting sick and passing away. Seeing how much she loved and continues loving that man never fails restoring my belief that real love doesn't simply go away. My list covers a number of secret crushes I harbor, but this one will probably go on for as long as I'm alive, able to see and know just how beautiful she is, both inside and out. Aww, secret crushes. Yeah, no. I have nothing to add to that. Okay. I don't want to tarnish <laughs> anything that you just said. Normally it's like, oh, he's so stupid. No, I'm not going to be a dick. Oh, it's, I mean, I'm not going to be a dick today, at least about this. So why don't we move on and talk about the cranberries? Yeah, let's go talk about them. A 
I put my mic in a strange place when we sat down just now. I feel like it's trying to assault me. Like I had to come over here. To like, you feel like you're in prison right now. Like, wait, it's uncomfortable to move too far over that way. Shaq's dick in your face. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. The first album we covered by the Cranberries was the Everybody Else album from 1993. This was my middle album. This was my bottom album. Out of the 12 tracks, I gave eight fives. I gave two fives. My top track was I Will Always. My top track was Linger. And my bottom track was Wanted. Same. This group came out swinging. That was weird. Whistling like, oh, oh dude. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Herbert um, the Pervert. Yeah. Get your fat ass back here. <laughs> you can take your pants off if you want to. You sound like Hank, Mr. Hanky now. Um, <laughs> This group came out swinging with their moody and uniquely ethereal sound already wildly cohesive. They had one of the greatest vocalists ever as well, making them instantly recognizable. The disc falters in small ways, but mostly is like having Mazzy stars fade into you, blended with the beauty of Irish balladry. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, this band is Irish. This band is very Irish. Vocals are captivating and mesmerizing, very ethereal sounding, which might be, uh, might contribute to the whole Irish roots, hazy and dreamlike alternative rock. I hope what you said was worth hearing. Uh, I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I looked over, I looked over, I I had to get out of the way of the mic because like I said, it's assaulting me. I Mm -hmm. looked over and all I saw was my nuts. (laughs) My notes. (laughs) Your nuts. All I saw was my notes to say, let my nuts go. Oh, okay. Can I just say before we move on that I really wish Irish music was a bigger thing in the Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. The Cranberries, Hozier, Mm -hmm. it's all just evidence that... Speaking of, I have a video that I'm going to send you of Hozier doing a like traditional Irish folk song. Blue's been like all about it. I'm going to send it to you to watch. If you like it, put it on the mentions. I we we liked it. I'll and throw it's it there. Like his shit. So I'll send it to you. I might send one back and I'll put that on mentions as well. Okay. Well, let's just put all the things on the mentions playlist. I wonder if how many listeners just turned the show off because they don't want to hear about the mentions playlist because they're never going to go look it up. So they're just like, I'm checking out. We have to let them know that it's still there. <laughs> We're still adding to it, even though no one's paying attention. The next album we covered was No Need to Argue from 1994. This was my top album. This was also my top album. Out of the 13 tracks, I gave 11 fives. I gave two fives. My top track was No Need to Argue. My top track was Dreaming My Dreams. And my bottom track, it was a toss up between 21 or Yeats Grave, but or Yeats Grave, but both of those, I, I love those songs. My bottom track was Yeats Grave, so makes total sense. Sunnier than their previous release, this is the Cranberries at their absolute best. Though not perfectly rated, this is one of my favorite LPs. It's a breathing underwater sort of spin, easy to get lost in, and just as likely to make you happy as it is to make you sad. A reliable comfort in a world which will cause you to seek out such comforts. For me, this is a little stranger, more experimental. Seems a little unfocused and less dreamy than the last album, but definitely a little bit more original. Doesn't sound like any, this album doesn't sound like anybody else to me. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I got I to like say that about input. that. I like that input. Bury the Hatchet from 1999 was our final album. This was my bottom album. This was not my bottom album. This was my middle album. Out of the 14 tracks, I gave six fives. I gave two fives. My top track was a toss up between Shattered and Dying in the Sun. My top track was Just My Imagination. My bottom track was Copycat. And my bottom track was Delilah. I want to love that song so much. But you can't. Eh, You can't. uh, Anyway. (laughs) While this outing contains some truly unforgettable songs, it also offers up a more electric instrumental bass and some odd vocal and lyrical choices. Half of it is greatness. The other half ranges from weird and repetitive to simply okay or almost awesome. Nothing close to resembling the consistency we heard on the other two albums, but still worth hearing for the high points. For me, it's a bit repetitive, upbeat, and more, a lot more rock is added this go around. Eh, not bad. Middle, you know, middle of the road for me. Definitely loses something that makes the Cranberries greater like in the previous album. So It's worth pointing out. If there's somebody out there who tells you that you need to hear the cover of Zombie. Like what? Can- the Camel's Hunt? Oh, which one? 
That's what I'm saying. That song in particular, for those of you who... Who just did one. I'm trying not to sound like a dick right now. There was a version by, I think it's the Wolves or something like that. They got popular right mm-hmm. after she passed away, right yes. after their lead singer passed away, Dolores O'Riordan. But Zombie's been covered over 50 times. Yeah. That song's covered a lot. Yeah, but they that's all that's the version that everybody talks about is that that new one. I remember one being on the radio too, but I can never remember who did it or what I don't want to go through all 50 versions of yeah. them. That's assuming I can even <laughs> find them. They remind me uh the cranberries remind me of Oasis in their floatier moments. Mm. I would recommend the cranberries to Inya fans. I think that's a crossover that you wouldn't be anticipating, but if you like Inya, you're almost certain to love the cranberries. <laughs> I know it's weird, right? No, Inya? I'm I'm sorry. I have a weird uh connection with Inya and your sister, and I just go Only Time? Is that No, the Return to Innocence. Is that Inya? That's Enigma. Oh, okay. Thank God. <laughs> I've heard of Inya, but I just got them mixed up with the other one, whatever you just said. Anyway, we're getting off topic. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. We've established this a long time ago. All right. So let's do this. First person to write me and tell me why I associate Inya with the Fugees, I'll let you pick an artist later in oh, the season. Damn. First person to write me and let me know why. All right. The music makes me feel like I'm having an emotional daydream. Well, the music makes me feel like I'm walking in a dream. So it's good dream music. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've not heard much from this group beyond what we covered today. In spite of adoring most of what I already know by them. Dolores having now passed away, I'm excited about diving deeper when their name comes out of our finale jar. This music saw me through many low points as a teen. And so they'll always be, to borrow their own phrase, special to me. No. Originally, they were named Cranberry Saw Us. <laughs> Where do you find this shit? <laughs> Don't ask. But I thought so it like was... like dorkplanet.musicdorkplanet.net. That's exactly you... the web address. Thank you so much for letting them know where to... Letting it, the listeners know. It doesn't exist, and I just trademarked it. Yes, it so. did. Cranberry Saw Us. Cranberry Saw Us. Wow. Before Dolores O'Riordan joined when she was 18 years old. And told them, guys, we can't you're, do this. You're never gonna, you're never gonna be anything. As Cranberry saw us, she was apparently too cool for the rest of them. Um, O'Riordan died, like Shane said, of an accidental drowning at the age of 49 in 2018. And the remaining Cranberries vowed to never continue without her. They were actually in the middle of making a brand new album when she passed, and they decided not to finish it because there is no Cranberries without Dolores O'Riordan. And I would second that. Yeah. I think this is one of the few instances where even if you could find someone who had the same voice... It's not the same. It's not going to be the same. Nope. So who won for you? I put my papers down, damn it. The level of unprofessionalism. See, you'd think I would know off the top of my head, but like I said, I was never sure. I'm get I'm beginning to think that you make this shit up every time. It's okay I know it's papers. all written. But... Case choice took it from me. Actually, cranberries had twenty five fives. Case choice had thirty two. Ooh, damn! All right. Well, surprisingly, case choice also won it for me. And I really like them. Okay. I really like case choice. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Cranberries is another one of those nostalgic bands that has a lot to offer, but not as much as I thought they would. They're very good. I'm not going to take anything away from them, but I found myself sticking with Kay's Choice and really, really latching on to the songs that they provided. I don't know what it was. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. And both of these artists are apt to grow on you. This is really a lot. I know Rayburn doesn't listen to the albums multiple times. She goes through and usually what she marks is what we end up with. Whereas I listen to them both twice just because of experience. And I still don't feel like I'm doing justice because... I have no idea how you even have time. You can... I make time. (laughs) (laughs) But you... You realize that things change as you listen to it more and more. And this is, both of these groups are great examples of the more you listen, the more you're probably going to make it matter to yourself. It's going to stick to you. And they're very much the type of artist, like Shane says, it grows on you. But the songs that I liked by Cranberries, because this is my first time really listening to Kay's Choice, especially Cranberry songs, going and listening to back to their songs 10 years ago, I wouldn't have dug a lot of what I dug here. 
But I don't know if it's with age, maturity, whatever. I found myself really liking the stuff that I ha I didn't like before. So, yeah. Like Shane said, they're definitely a, a fungus sort of band. Yeah. And like we've discussed previously, I think the more you're exposed to, the more apt you are to enjoy mm -hmm. what you're hearing. That's not to say that as you listen to more and more music, suddenly the stuff that you used to think was trash is no longer trash. It's like if you if you love a Bone Thugs and Harmony album mm -hmm. and there are songs there you don't like, mm -hmm. I don't it's usually it doesn't matter how much other music you listen to. It's not going to turn a turd into something good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you might learn to appreciate country to some extent or learn to appreciate jazz to some extent mm -hmm. as you listen to more and more music. We are rambling. <laughs> are we ready to draw for next week? Well, the thing is, we've already drawn. Oh, have we? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm yes. new here. You're just, you're in the flow of saying things we've yeah, said I before. Know. I know. So we did want to go ahead and start letting you guys know in advance what albums we're going to be covering so you can listen ahead of time. And we had to move some things around. So you can't know it yet, but we were supposed to be having a guest on mm -hmm. in the next set of episodes. But we've got to switch it around because of timing. So... The other thing that came out of the jar that we're not really sure how to feel about, we're not stacking the deck. That's what I'm trying to say. But we mm -hmm. had to go back and draw some more. Yes. Very interesting <laughs> draw. So the next time we're coming on, we're going to be covering Aerosmith, mm -hmm. who is one of my sister Laura's top 10 artists. Yes. Going up against Guns N' Roses. Yep. Who is one of my Aunt Jennifer's top 10 artists. Mm -hmm. The Aerosmith albums that you picked are Toys in the Attic from 1975, Permanent Vacation from 87, and Nine Lives from 97. Yep. The GNR albums, pretty obvious, I would hope. Yeah. <laughs> Appetite for Destruction from 87, Use Your Illusion 2 from 91, and Chinese Democracy from 2008. Clearly, you were going for a slice. Yes. For these artists. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that GNR fans would have strung us up and lit our bodies on fire if we didn't include that Appetite for Destruction album. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think most people who know the band might have strung us up. I would be very curious to know, hardcore Guns N' Roses fans, is it Appetite for You or is it the other albums? Did you want to hear lies? <laughs> Are you upset that we didn't go with the spaghetti incident? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway... We will be back in a few weeks, Aerosmith and Guns N' Roses. It's going to be fun. Where are your witticisms when I'm silent, Rayburn? I'm all, I'm all witted out, man. You're tuckered out today. Yeah, I need a nap. It's been a long day putting up with your ass. Let my nuts go. <laughs> Quit reading your notes. Shit. <laughs> Close out this episode, please, so I can be done with you. That's going to do it for this week. Hit up our playlists on Spotify, visit our merch shop, share our show with your friends. Come find us on social media to let us know what you think. And until next time, fill your world with music. Let my nuts go. Let my nuts go.